I will not be silent when Israel commits its crimes against the Palestinians. And I consider nothing more despicable than to use their suffering and their martyrdom to try to justify the torture, the brutalization, the demolition of homes that Israel daily commits against the Palestinians. So I refuse any longer to be intimidated or browbeaten by the tears. If you had any heart in you, you would be crying for the Palestinians, not for what you got. في إسرائيل ينشأ الأطفال على غسيل الدماغ وكراهية الفلسطينيين من أيام الروضة وفي تصريح لمواطن يهودي يقول مثل أي شخص نشأ في إسرائيل مررت بآلية غسيل الدماغ بالضبط منذ الروضة نشأنا كالجنود Like anyone growing up in Israel, uh, I went through the whole indoctrination mechanism. And we are being trained to be soldiers from kindergarten, literally from kindergarten. The moment I realized, I, I managed to sort of overcome that indoctrination, then everything became very clear, because the situation is crystal clear. Uh, one of the main successes of Israeli propaganda is to convince the world that the situation is complicated. But it's far from being complicated. It's probably the least complicated conflict in the world today. Um, and, and it's all about basically those who have the power, those who oppress and subjugate and, and uh, tread over the indigenous people of the land who have been oppressed and subjugated and expelled from their land. And this is what it's about. The situation here is not very different other than the way it is perceived in the world and among Israeli society themselves. They like to perceive themselves as some being something else, as being you know, liberal and progressive and all of that. And I also thought of myself as such until I realized that actually, you know, this is not the case. The case is very clear, and I'm not on the right side of history. And um, and that's when, you know, with the moment I managed to overcome this type of brainwashing, then the rest was very easy. So this one is all about creating a place which is for one select group and only that. It's not only the fact that they wanted to take over to usurp the land and the resources and all of that, it's also about this exclusive nature of the place, that this is ours and only ours. And even any, any Palestinian being born in Israel, even, the, even if they're Israeli citizens, is already regarded as some sort of a threat to the state. Mm -hmm. The need to segregate, the need to separate and not to interact with Palestinians is part of Israeli identity. So we have to understand that Israeli identity depends on denying Palestinian identity and denying either the existence of Palestinians altogether or at the very least denying their uh, identity, their culture and so on. And also, right after the ethnic cleansing of Palestine, right after the Palestinians uh, were expelled from their homes and became refugees, the very next thing that happened was that there was a concerted effort of mass looting of books and other uh, cultural artifacts from Palestinian homes which was led by the uh, National Library in Israel. So, so it's for a reason that when we say existence is resistance for Palestinians, this is true. Just by very existing on their land, this is an act of resistance in itself. Even more so when they actually claim their rights, claim their identity, do cultural work, like produce Palestinian culture, that is an act of in war. Israel has been وتسرع انهيارها 
Pharrell, explain to me how you're making your future safer, how you're protecting your citizens and your hostages. Every Palestinian you kill, you create a family that will seek retribution against you forever. Every Palestinian you kill, you increase the hostility and hatred of the Middle Eastern countries for you. Every Palestinian you kill, you increase the repulsion and disgust of Western populations against you for the evil acts you're committing. Every Palestinian you kill, you reduce the extent to which you can have positive relations with countries in the future. You have material support from the politicians you've bought and paid for now. You will not get that in the future. How are you protecting your future and the safety of your citizens in the future? We're watching and we see an Israel that is choosing conflict, that is choosing to endanger the Middle East everyone in it, and particularly your own citizens in your future. We're seeing an Israel that is insane, doing exactly what happened in Germany in the 1930s last century. Explain to us, Israel, how you are making your citizens safer in the future with your current hatred-filled murderous actions. Explain. صحفي بريطاني يقول لقد خسرت إسرائيل هذه الحرب عسكريا واستراتيجيا وأخلاقيا. Israel has lost this so-called war. Now, before we discuss the murderous onslaught against Rafa, which is in the south of Gaza, bear in mind what I just said there. Israel has suffered a catastrophic defeat, militarily, strategically, politically, morally. It has failed in its stated war aims, defeating Hamas, who will never be defeated by military means, as any seasoned military expert will tell you. Indeed, they have taken over much of the destroyed areas of Gaza that the IDF has withdrawn from. They haven't brought back the hostages. Well, the vast majority of those who were released, of course, only were so because of a ceasefire and negotiated prisoner exchange. And Israel has killed far more of its own hostages than it has rescued by military means. Israel's international reputation has all but completely collapsed. In the States, it depends on for weapons and diplomatic support. Public opinion has swung decisively and irreversibly against it. In the months and years ahead, the uncritical support it has received from those states will unravel. Too many people have seen things they cannot unsee, heard things they can't unhear, read things they cannot unread. That goes particularly for younger generations who will increasingly assert themselves politically. Now, much of the world already treated Israel as a rogue state. That position will now be cemented. The fact that a new generation of younger Jewish Americans repudiate what Israel stands for should terrify it the most. If the Israeli state was capable of acting rationally, that is even in its own narrow, selfish strategic interests, it would understand all of this. Alas, it cannot, because it has been overwhelmed by genocidal fervor and is suffering the fate of a settler colonial state which refuses to come to terms with what it's done to the indigenous population it has displaced and oppressed. And it is trapped in an internal cycle of hateful radicalization which will end very badly for it, and crucially, which has catastrophic implications for its allies. The number of the dead in has been hovering around 45,000 for the last few weeks. I saw a report yesterday which confirmed that the death toll is now at around 200,000. 200,000. Let that sink in. That is 10% of the total population. Now, the reason why it was hovering around 45,000 for so long is because that is the number of identified bodies. The way people have been identifying bodies mainly is through dental similarities literally comparing the teeth of skulls to smiling pictures of their family members. I also heard of one case where a man was identified by a dialysis mark in his arm. Now, if this does not shock you, then you have lost every single ounce of your humanity. And I sincerely recommend that you go and read The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. And as always, I cannot wait 